Hi everyone, this is Eugene Lisho. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Eyesight Forensic, and that's a software package made from MapTech in Australia. I was introduced to this just a couple of weeks ago, and I have to say that uh, I was pleasantly surprised with how uh, feature rich this little program is. So I thought it would be worthwhile to make a little video and show some people what, what this is about. Disclaimer here is that uh, I'm still relatively new at this. Uh, this is also a beta that I have. So um, I believe this is based on the iSight Studio software that they have, which is uh, already uh, well established. But there are a number of features that are still being added to this, and it's very likely that you know many things could change from, from now until the time uh, that the software is released. So uh, with that, you know, just a very brief introduction here. But first thing under File, uh, we have Import, Export, Preferences, and Quit. And the first thing you'll probably notice is there's no Save, no Save As. And the reason is that MapTech has decided that they're going to continuously write to a file so that you never lose your data in the case that you have a crash or something like that. So uh, that's, that's sort of an important feature. A thing to understand about that, though, is it's not easy to go back and revert to an older version because you obviously can't save it. But what you do is, if you're working on a point cloud, all you need to do is make a copy of it. And uh, if you're going to do some experimental things uh, with the point cloud, you just work on a copy. Now, under uh, edit, uh, you know, some of the typical things, but you have some features here for working with uh, surfaces and polygons. You also have uh, registration. Uh, there's also a number of analysis tools here, which are very useful, especially in forensics for getting distances, points. We can create, so we can do a number of things, or where here there's a bullet trajectory module, but you can create basically geometry from point clouds. Uh, modeling, if we need to do surfacing, we have some of that here as well. We have filters for selection. We can color the point cloud differently. Uh, spectrum height. We can also do surface change. So uh, surface change is kind of interesting because it gives you the deviation or changes between two similar surfaces. So if you're doing vehicle crush or if you're comparing two different footprints, any two particular models that you are going to compare, you can use surface change. You can also color the point clouds. And one of my favorite features here is tile and tie. And now this is not active now because I don't have point clouds in there, but a cool little feature. So the first thing I'm going to do is import a point cloud. So I'm just going to hit File Import. And I've got this little window that comes up. I'm going to choose the file that I want to import. And it's going to be this footprint 2 here. So I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to choose to import this as a custom file. And this window comes up here. And you can see that the, the sample uh, text that comes up, or the sample data, is XYZ RGB. It looks like it's in the right format. And down at the side here, XYZ are columns 1, 2, 3, and RGB data is 4, 5, 6. So I am just going to go to the bottom here and say, yep, I want to import that way. And uh, for here, I'm just going to say, yeah, that's fine. The custom was fine. And I'm also going to choose to import this as centimeters, because I believe I did that originally as centimeters. Uh, this was not a scanned, a laser scanned. Uh, generated point cloud. This was a uh, photogrammetry generated point cloud. And so with this, I'm just going to hit, yep, let's bring this in and we'll see the progress bar here. Now this is not a very large point cloud, so it's, it's pretty quick and should be easy to work with for this video. So in order to manipulate the point cloud, we need to go to this hands-free mode here and we can start to rotate and, and move this thing around. So you can see I've got the point cloud here. I'm currently in orthographic mode. I like to work in perspective mode, so I'm just going to click this button here to do that. Now, there's, there's a couple of cool things that you can do here, and like I said, if you're going to be working on a point cloud and doing some trial and error things or just experimenting, whatever that might be, it's a good idea to make a copy of the point cloud. So I'm just going to select the point cloud, I'm going to right click and copy, and I am going to just go to the scrapbook here, and I'm going to paste. So this will make another copy of that point cloud, and I'm going to move this window over here and I'm going to drag and drop this using the middle mouse button into the window here. So this is a second copy. Now what I can do with window is tile and tie and I really like this feature and the reason is it's great for comparisons. So um, if, if I take my original cloud here and I leave it as color and I go to my second copy and I let's say I want to make this a spectrum height it changes it here and the nice thing is I can change I can move this around and uh, look at the two, you know, side by side and get an appreciation for, you know, different areas uh, and I can look at it in color and then again with the uh, spectrum height. So a really neat, uh, really nice little feature here. And I'm going to change that back to perspective mode. 
what I'll do is I'll show you a little bit about animation. So I'm going to close this here. I'll maximize this. Now I don't have a lot of real estate here, so I apologize. I'm trying to keep the video size down. But this little keyframe here, this uh, button here, this icon, I'm going to click on this, and this will bring up a little uh, keyframe window. And what this will allow me to do is, based on any of the views that I have, um, I just need to hit apply and it'll create keyframes for me. So I need to create a very first keyframe. So I'm going to hit apply. And what it's done here is it's created a, a cameras folder. So I'm just going to open this up. And this is my initial starting keyframe. Now, the duration from the last frame is five seconds. So every time that I choose a new keyframe, it's going to be five seconds. So I'm just going to rotate this around like that and hit apply. I get a new keyframe. Go like that. Hit apply. And then I'm going to go uh, like this, something like that, and hit apply. So I've got four keyframes. Now, let's say for whatever reason, I'm not happy with keyframe three or two or something like that. We can go back and make some changes. So I'm just going to hit OK. Uh, actually, it made a, f a fifth keyframe. I'm going to cut that. And I'm going to go back to frame two. So I'm going to right click here. and I'm just going to go to edit keyframe. And it, you can see the window here jumped into the, the view of that particular keyframe, uh, exactly how I, I keyed it. So uh, if I want to change this now, let's say I wanted to do something drastic so we can see, I don't know, something crazy just to show that it, it's changed. I'm going to do this and then just hit OK. So um, it, well, now when I go to edit this, this keyframe, it stays in place. Um, if I want to show the animation here or just try to take a preview, I'm going to move this over here. I've got a, uh, a little slider. So what I can do is I can just drag this around. You can see where, where frame 2 is just sort of flipped over and then frame 3 goes back to sort of where I had it and then frame 4 right there. So it's a little kind of a crazy uh, animation but for the video I think it'll be just fine. So if I want to render this out now all I need to do is choose uh, some of the settings here. I can choose the resolution. I'll choose a small resolution. I will choose a little bit higher quality at 8,000 kilobytes per second and I need to uh, I need to name this something. So I think I'm going to name this uh, just footprint uh, demo and uh, it gives me the full frames here if I wanted to render out uh, less frames or uh, cut off the, the front end or the back end you could do that here but I'm going to render this out also I'm just going to hit render and oop, here's the progress bar there's a progress bar that I just brought back in here and this is going along uh, pretty well so um, I'll just pause it here and then uh, come back to it in a second Okay, so the render has just finished, and what I'm going to do now is go open the file. Okay, so I've got the file here. I'm just going to press play and watch this go. And you can see I've got the uh, the render here, the point cloud. It looks quite nice. Uh, they've got a quite a little nice rendering engine there that makes the uh, point clouds look very professional. So that's pretty much it on uh, a very brief introduction to MapTech. I think it's uh, a nice little program, and I'm going to keep my eye on it and see uh, how it develops in the near future. Thanks, everyone.